It is hard to believe that spring is already here and I am trying to get my porch ready, but I am fighting against Quilla weather and the gray clouds. So I am in a rush today. Got to do a little cleaning, a little decorating, and I'm taking you along with me. So let's go ahead and get started and I will show you how I went from this to this. I love starting with a fresh and clean canvas. So I'm starting off by sweeping my front porch and getting rid of those dead spring leaves. Anyone else get spring leaves or is it just a Southern thing, a Texas thing? I would love to know. After I get things swept off, I wipe everything down. A lot of the items that you are seeing on my porch are either thrifted or things I have found on the side of the road. Starting with this closet door, I actually found that on the side of the road. I have a video where I just show that I painted the front of it to just kind of give it a nice white look to kind of contrast against my brick. I love that texture difference. I also found this table on the side of the road and all I did was actually switch the top out to make it smaller so that it would be a great piece. And then I painted that. I did a whole video on that as well, showing how I painted that so that it would work really well outside. That has been outside for a year and a half and it is doing fantastic. This chair was another trash find. Can you believe I? we do, people put out the best things on the side of the road where I live. Um, I haven't decided exactly how I want to paint that chair or if I'm going to leave it alone. What do you think I should do? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Now this black little container, this is an ash bucket I found at a thrift store. I just think it is so fun. I'm thinking that I'm going to drill some holes and use it for a planter, but I haven't gotten up the nerve to do it yet, so I just keep putting it back on my porch. The welcome sign that you see, that was a DIY that I did using a thrifted cabinet door as the base. I love this little chair stool. This is another roadside find. I have a whole video on how I painted it. It's one of my favorite pieces. Now, the planter is a Dollar Tree DIY that I recently just did, and the hedgehog I picked up at Walmart. So this is the rug that I use underneath my mat on my doorstep and I love it. It's from Walmart. It's only $4. It's washable. So I am going to wash it, but I'm going to set it aside because I have this one for spring and I love the blues in it. I just think it's a lot lighter. So this is the one I'm going to currently put on my doorstep and then let me show you how I'm going to do the mat for spring. I have this Dollar Tree mat and by spray painting it, it's so easy to create whatever kind of mat I want. And for just a dollar, I'm not gonna stress about what happens to it. And honestly, they last just as long as like a $10 mat. So I can replace them as often as I like. So I'm gonna clean this up because I did have it outside and it has some grass on it. So I'm just gonna use some tape quickly to clean that off. And then I'll show you how I'm gonna spray paint that. Okay, so here I have the rug and I'm just gonna take my tape quickly over it and pull off the grass that was on it from when it was already on the doorstep before. Similar if you were just using a lint roller if you had lint on your clothes. You can also use a lint roller if you have one and Dollar Tree sells those and that would be a really easy way to kind of clean it off because you want to make sure it's clean of any sort of grass, hair, things like that before you get started because otherwise those things will kind of spray onto it and you don't want those on here. I'm using Fusion's Pink Blush and I'm spraying that over the entire black mat. I'm doing that because when I think of spring, I think of light and bright and I don't think of black. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down as my base coat before I proceed with doing the rest of the mat. Now that the mat is dry, I'm going in with these Dollar Tree guy cuts. These are fantastic. They are a four inch and they will work perfect for me adding the letters on them. Spell out Hello Spring. Now in order to attach the letters on and keep them in place while I'm spray painting, I'm using this Gorilla Adhesive. It is repositionable so then it will not keep it on permanently and I can remove the die cuts once I'm done spray painting. Now I don't have all the letters that I need. I'm actually missing an L. So in order to help me with that, I'm going to use the letter F and do a little bit of a trimming to make that work. I just do a thin spray of the adhesive and then I place the letters starting in the center and working my way out. That way I make sure that they are 
placed in the center of my mat. I find that the easiest way. And now I'm going in with Rust-Oleum's Berry Pink. It is a bubble gum pink, but to me, that screams spring. I love it. Now the black of the mat is still kind of popping through, so it will tone it down a little bit. It's not going to be quite so poppy pink, but if you don't love pink, don't worry about it. You choose whatever color screams spring to you. Once the paint has dried, I then go in and I remove all of my letters. Now I'm pretty careful when I remove my letters so that I don't get finger smudges on the top. And that is only so I can use my letters later. I think they would make a really great banner. So this can become a two for one kind of project. I love projects like that. I love how the pink mat just pops off of the blue rug underneath it. I definitely feel a little bit more ready for spring. Alrighty, this is my shed of everything and I need to grab a few items to help me decorate my porch. Um, do you see that down there? On the very bottom? All the way down there? Yep, that one's labeled spring and summer. That's the bin I need to get to. But do you hear that noise out there? It is now raining. I think the sky won this round and I may have to finish the porch tomorrow. <sighs> Definitely a spring day. Okay, it's a brand new day. The sun is out, the wind is blowing, but I am so excited to finish this porch. I did pull out some of those items from my spring bin and I added them to my porch. I will make sure I leave some links at the end of this video if you're interested in any of the DIYs that I did for some of those projects. Now, Here's what I wanna to do to add to the porch. I have been wanting a yellow wreath for quite a while, and as soon as I saw these yellow flowers at Walmart, I knew that now was the time. I really wanted that bright pop. It just felt so spring and summery to me. So let's head inside and put that together. So I'm starting off with this gold hoop. I actually got this on clearance from Hobby Lobby, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it, but you can do the exact same thing using a hula hoop from Dollar Tree and a little bit of spray paint. So I'm just using an assortment of yellow flowers that I picked up at Walmart. I'm using a total of six bunches, two of each. And then I'm using this wheat grass. I love it because it's nice and wispy. To attach everything, I'm just using some zip ties. So I'm first starting off with a wheat grass. Now I decided that I wanted this wreath to be symmetrical on both sides. I'm only decorating the very bottom of the wreath. So I'm gonna place down the wheat grass on both sides opposite of each other and then go in with three zip ties, one in the center and then two, one on each side higher up to secure those pieces down. So now I'm going in with my largest yellow flower. These are called Austromeria. I think they're really pretty. They look like they could be a wildflower, but I believe they actually are a bulb if you were to get them, if they were real and not like a fake plant. Anyway, I used my wire cutters, cut those apart, and I'm now sliding them in between the different zip lines and arranging them how I want them on the wreath. Once I get them all arranged, I go in with another zip tie around their stems in order to secure them. And then I do the exact same thing to the other side because I'm just mirroring the two sides. Once I have that done, I go ahead and I cut apart these cute little bulb looking, ball looking picks, they're actually called YL Billy Button. <laughs> Never heard of them, but I thought they were really fun. Again, I kind of arranged them behind the Ostomeria picks and to get them exactly where I want them, go in with another zip tie to secure those down. Finally, to cover up all of the zip ties that I can, I'm going in with these, which is just some Queen Anne's lace and I'm placing those down and I'm just kind of cascading those down and that will cover up most of the zip ties and finish off my little cascading color of yellow. And I love how all of this is looking together. To finish covering up the zip ties, I have some scrap fabric on hand and I'm gonna take a piece of it and cut it down so that I can first just wrap it around and hot glue that down. And then I'm gonna take a second piece, tie it off into a bow
and then hot glue that to that first piece. And that is it. I absolutely love the way that this wreath turned out. I think it is a beautiful and the perfect pop of color to add to my front porch. The last thing I wanna do is add a no soliciting sign. I can't believe I've lived in my house for over 15 years and I don't have a no soliciting sign. And with the storms that we've had, oh boy, do I have people coming to my house and asking if they can provide like different services, especially if they can do something about our roof, which honestly, it doesn't need a repair, but it doesn't stop them from coming. So let's head inside and let's make a sign. So here I have a scrap piece of wood that I'm gonna be using and it measures six and a half by 10. Now I'm going in with Waverly's chalk paint and white. I love this, it's a great white. I'm only gonna use one coat of it, but I am making sure that I paint both the front and the back because I'm placing this in a window. So I want it to look good on both sides. I use my Cricut in order to create the wording, but hang tight till the end because I do have an alternative if you don't have a Cricut. I did no soliciting, seriously, don't make this weird just quickly turn around and walk away. So I place this on the board. To hang this up, I'm just using some Velcro command strips. I'm placing this in the window. As you can see, I made it eye level with my bell so that somebody can really see it. And then it was all done. I absolutely love this. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it works. I know not everyone has a Cricut machine, so I did create a free printable for you. The link is down in the description box. I picked out this video for you to watch next. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more easy DIYs. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.